This video is supported by Private Internet Access. With unlimited data for just $2.91 per month, they've got your VPN needs absolutely covered. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video. So with the launch of many new laptops recently and more of them having more and more cores and they're getting absolutely crazy to see, chances are your favorite creator has reviewed one of these laptops with the new four, six core machines and has spoken about how good it is to edit video on the go. Now being a video editor myself, I thought, well, why not give this a go? If all these people are talking about how great these laptops are to go ahead and edit video on, well, I must be missing out on something, right? So I went ahead and borrowed this guy right here, the new Dell XPS 15 9570, and man, this thing is one absolute weapon. Other than weighing an absolute ton for such a thin looking laptop, Damn, it has a lot of performance. With the 6 core, 12 megabyte cache CPU being the Core i9 at 4.8 gigahertz boost, paired up with 32 gigs of RAM and also to a 1050 Ti, and not to mention a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD, this thing absolutely flies for office work and also to pro applications. And honestly, I love my personal XPS 15, but man, I really wish I could keep this one that I borrowed because this thing is an absolute another level beast. Um, so I did go ahead and borrow this for a week to go ahead and do some video editing on and see what it's actually like to use these new machines. And definitely, yeah, I would love to sell my existing XPS 15 for one of these beasts. And that is until I saw the more scary part to this computer, and that was the price tag, which is not that great here in Australia. Now, if you want to know more about this beast, go ahead and check out the Western Gents channel, and I'll go ahead and leave them linked down in the description box, where they've done an absolute awesome job on covering just about every aspect of this laptop, from video editing benchmarks, because today it's more of talking about my experience than benchmarks and stuff, or if you want to check out gaming performance or anything like that, the absolute fantastic videos are over on their channel right there, so go ahead and say hi down in their comment sections and uh, check out those videos if you are interested again in picking up one of these laptops. Sure, I did get to use this for a week, but I'm not really doing a review of this. I'm just talking about my experience with using this laptop. Anyway, let's get back to the question at hand is, that is, how good is it really to use these kind of modern laptops for video editing rather than maybe, say, a traditional desktop? Now, for these tests, again, I did use the best of the best laptops, which was the XPS 15, with really the only thing offering more performance in a better package would be maybe like a massive beast gaming PC and seeing that this is somewhat thin, somewhat light and actually gets decent battery life when you're not pushing it hard. Uh, I do have to say the XPS 15 and I guess to a lesser point the XPS 13 are absolutely brilliant laptops. If you're looking for a PC laptop, don't go past the 13 or the 15 Dell XPS laptops. They just buy that, be done with it. It is a really nice thing. Now, to put a little context into uh, what I'm going to be talking about, when I talk about my desktop PC, this is a 10 core 20 thread beast 5960X GTX 1080 Ti 32GB RAM system. So, for all intents and purposes, it is locked and loaded and pretty high up there with the performance front. Sure, there is the new 20 series of video cards, and you could probably go with the new, what is it, 18 core monsters that you can buy, but um, at the end of the day, this thing still is an absolute beast, and that is what I use for editing up these videos and also do any client work that I do go ahead and do. So I have arguably one of the best desktops versus arguably one of the best laptops. So this is going to be definitely an interesting thing uh, to go ahead and test and have a little bit of an experience from. And finally, I do want to say that I don't think the Dell XPS is a bad machine. Not at all. The CPU is a boss, the GPU is a boss, plenty of RAM, plenty of storage. All in all, it is a very well-rounded package and it's just a massive feat of engineering to cram that much performance into something that is like this big and like that thin. It is absolutely crazy that they've managed to go ahead and do that. So big thumbs up from me. So let's actually get into my experience and it was a really big mixed bag. I mean, after seeing all these videos of people saying how great it was that they could chop their red uh, video files, their 8K video files, they could basically do whatever they want there. 
I was a little bit disappointed when my little GH5 couldn't have its video chopped on one of these machines. Now, uh, do keep in mind, my GH5 records a little bit more intense than maybe standard GH5 files, so I do record in 4K 400 megabits 10 bit 422 log video, and then I do apply color LUT to it, which does a lot to the image, goes from basically this to this. So there is a lot of work actually going on here, and once I color grade it, and once I take that footage straight out of the camera, the laptop just could not keep up with what I was doing uh, at full resolution. I could go down to, I believe it was quarter resolution, and it was okay-ish, but still choppy, and I could drop down to eight, uh, eight, half, eight, one eighth of a resolution, uh, and it was able to work just fine. But Unfortunately, uh, my bubble was kind of burst as soon as I hit play on full resolution and just completely chugged. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, there are a lot better codecs that I could be recording to. There's a lot better things that I could do. I could probably build some sort of LUT and bake it into the camera so the image that you see here is exactly what comes straight out of the camera, making it a lot easier on the computer. But for the workflow that I do have, it just works for me on my desktop PC. And transferring that to the laptop, Oof, was definitely a bit of a letdown, and I was expecting a little bit more uh, in terms of what I actually got out of it. Now, don't get me wrong, if I went ahead and just got standard clips out of the GH5 that didn't need a ton of color corrections, it worked absolutely fine, and as soon as I enabled proxies uh, inside of Premiere Pro, which make lower resolution much easier to work with video codecs, and I usually use a GPU accelerated uh, codec, um, it works absolutely perfectly. I can play back in either half resolution or full resolution, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, it makes the experience a whole lot better but unfortunately the biggest drawback first and foremost was I just couldn't edit raw video that was color graded straight out of the camera. Now uh, to be clear my desktop PC with 10 cores 20 threads and a GTX 1080 Ti also too can't handle that so um, I guess it was a little bit of a weird expectation but at the same time I did see so much positivity around editing on a laptop. And to be clear, the color grade that I do use for especially this kind of shot is kind of a really crazy one because the uh, shadows that we have over in that corner and then the highlights that are around me and the colors here and there uh, basically needs a HDR conversion and then to squeeze that HDR back into standard dynamic range to upload to YouTube. It's kind of like the log file looks like this and then it's pulled into HDR and then squashed back down to SDR to kind of deliver it to you. It's a bit of a long convoluted way with like four different LUTs being applied and then a lumetri color over the top. It's quite kind of crazy, but works for me, works in the studio and uh, does the job right there. So um, in terms of color grading, that kind of stuff was a little bit of a letdown there. Though that being said, uh, my week of editing with this laptop overall wasn't that bad. Once I learned the strengths and weaknesses of the laptop, it was definitely a really good experience. For instance, editing these kind of talking head videos, which just sort of mainly an A shot, maybe a couple B-roll shots thrown in there, but really not that much at all. Uh, the laptop laptop was an absolute perfect candidate for that. Basically, I was able to create my proxy files and just chop through everything really, really fast, though the proxy creation was a little bit of a drama for some reason uh, when I was going ahead and making proxies. This weird thing happened when it would start creating the proxy and for the first 20%, the GPU loaded up, the CPU loaded up, it absolutely smashed it. But then it slowed right down after 20%, and then when it reached about 80%, it would max out the CPU and the GPU again and make it look like it was an absolute beast. And for some reason, uh, the CPU managed to underclock to less than a gigahertz when it was rendering a proxy file. Like, what? Um, some people might go ahead and say, maybe I've got the wrong Premiere Pro settings or something like that. And honestly, I tried default settings, I tried the settings that I use on my computer, I've tried settings that other people use, and for some reason, it just decides to go down to less than like one gigahertz processing speed um, between sort of 20% and 80%, and then at either end of the spectrum, it boosts straight up and finishes really, really quickly. That said, it wasn't the world's biggest weight, and comparing this guy to my desktop PC, maybe a 15 minute render in 4K, that I usually do to YouTube took about two hours on the laptop to render versus an hour and a half or an hour and 15 on my desktop PC. So all in all, for the sake of it, it wasn't really that bad when compared to a pretty high-end desktop PC. Now that kind of sounds really bad and things are looking pretty bad. I mean, fan noise was an absolute just disaster. It sounded like I was sitting in front of a jet engine all day take, trying to take off and it was really bad. If I hear this thing's fan spin up one more time, it is being thrown out the window because I'm really not a fan of that. Um, it just is really, really loud. But all these problems that I had instantly went away like that when I was able to stand up from my desk 
and move around and have the same quality videos being created in a pretty timely manner wherever I was. Whether I wanted to sit in bed, whether I wanted to sit on the couch or be out and about in say a park or a cafe or something like that, I was able to take all this power with me and edit on the go. Sure, sitting at the desk, it's no comparison to having a full-fledged desktop PC, but damn, the experience of being able to just take this laptop up with me and go wherever I wanted to go was absolutely crazy. Now, on top of this, I have this guy over here, which I didn't plan to actually show on the camera, but anyway, I have the Dell Power Companion, which I picked up years ago at this point, which gives a nice little boost in terms of battery life. So this guy plus the built-in battery does get me around three-ish hours, two and a half, three hours worth of video editing, uh, which is definitely okay. I mean, it would be nice to have longer. So all in all, it wasn't really that bad at all. Just so happens I could only be out and about for three hours before I needed to plug back in. And I guess the best workflow for this was I was able to shoot a video like this, go ahead and plug the laptop into power, set it up all the proxies and all that kind of stuff, let it all render. Once that was done, unplug it, take it with me wherever I wanted to go because I had the plenty of storage in this guy, plenty of power with me for about three or four hours if I was pushing it. Um, so all in all, it was really awesome to see on the go. So if we put that guy over there, all in all though, it was really cool just to move away from the desk. And that was a really big plus for me, having this power on the go, and I really did enjoy that. But here lies the biggest problem with editing on a laptop. Other than the battery, which we can ignore because obviously as future technologies get better, batteries will get better, but you're limited to just one screen and when you're out and about, that one screen can be a real big limiting factor. For just about any type of professional application, generally speaking, you'll want at least more than one display. And the XPS 15's 15 inch 4K display is probably the best display on the market, but still leaves me wanting for another screen. My usual editing setup has three displays where I can have ingested footage on one, main editing in the middle, and then color correcting and audio correcting on the side. And just having one screen was definitely a big jump to go back to uh, for editing videos. On top of that, whilst the screen was super nice, it was almost impossible to edit color when I was out and about, basically rendering that idea useless because when I wanted to actually correct colors, I needed to come back to either a dark room or somewhere that didn't have a ton of reflections on the screen washing out the image so I could make sure the colors were correct. And as I did mention, the fans were an absolute annoyance. Even though the CPU and the GPU were less than 50 degrees Celsius, they still intended to max out and make an absolute horrible racket. So it was definitely a bit of annoyance when it comes to the actual noise of this machine that I was having to edit next to. It just really wasn't that great. Coming from almost a dead silent desktop to a PC that sounds like it's going to take off and fly into space was really, really annoying. And it actually sounds like I had a not too good experience and it sounds like I'm kind of against editing on a laptop, which is not exactly the case. I did definitely have a mixed experience. I liked the fact I could go anywhere, but I didn't like the fact that it was so limiting and had so many other problems. Whereas a lot of people out there are just talking about how great these machines are to edit on the go and that kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong, they can edit on the go, but if you already have a desktop PC, that is definitely a little bit of a problem. And I guess that then brings us to a bit of a conclusion, TLDW, and really uh, giving you something you can actually take away from this video. The XPS 15, 95, 70, this particular model, is an absolute bomb AF laptop. The screen is sweet, the keyboard was amazing, and the overall performance for the package that it comes in, I mean, like, look at that, so thin. Uh, it is absolutely mind-blowing, and I have to say, if I was traveling anywhere, this guy would be the the first laptop I do take with me, and probably the only laptop I do take with me. But uh, unfortunately, there are still limitations of these laptops, such as heat getting really, really loud, and also to the fact you are limited to just one screen. Sure, I was in the end able to cut my 4K videos on this particular laptop once I'd gone ahead and let it create proxies, but it wasn't able to do it natively like everyone may be talking about. Proxies are definitely your best friend when it comes to laptop editing, and that was definitely something that I did experience here. That said, not everybody has a 10-core desktop to compare to, and something like this may be way better than an existing quad-core or even dual-core desktop PC that you might be running from quite a few years ago. So if you are in the market for a new editing computer and do need something on the go, sure, I wasn't exactly as happy with a laptop PC, but you've got to remember I was comparing it to a 10-core 1080 Ti system, so it's kind of a uh, given that it won't exactly stack up there. So this is definitely, I guess, a little bit more better value for what you do get. And I do understand not everybody could afford something like that. And not everybody has access to a machine like that, making a laptop like this 
an absolute epic bargain. And if you're just editing videos for YouTube like this kind of talking head with a couple B-roll shots mixed in, maybe a light review kind of thing, or maybe you're looking into getting into some light content creation for client work, these laptops these days are absolutely awesome with their new six core machines and they're just really, really nice to see what we do get here. And I do agree that uh, editing photos and videos on a laptop is definitely possible with the right settings enabled and can be definitely a good experience. For me personally though, I'm not overly convinced and I'll be going straight back to my desktop after I finish editing this video right on this laptop right here. Um, but there are definitely still some good arguments here. That said, today we're really just talking about the tools that are used to go ahead and make videos. At the end of the day, whether you edit on a desktop or a laptop like this, whether it's a brand new machine, an old machine or something like that, it's really just coming back to the content that you should be creating. You should spend less time worrying about the tools you're going to use and more time making something with those tools. Sure, I had my complaints with the laptop, but at the end of the day, I was still able to go ahead and make videos on the laptop and it wasn't really that bad. I was still able to make YouTube videos, still able to fulfill client work and all of this was done in a timely manner. So yes, we're PC enthusiasts and we do like to compare our bits and pieces, computers and desktops and that kind of stuff, but when we go go ahead and actually take a look and step back from all this, it really matters about what kind of content you're creating and whether you can create it at all. And I have to say, modern laptops can definitely do that. So whilst it was an interesting experiment, all I really have to take away from this is go out and make something, whether it's a laptop, whether it's a desktop, go ahead and make something. Guys, I don't know, let me know down in that comment sections, what do you think? If you had a choice between laptop and desktop, what would you choose? Personally, I'm on the desktop front, but um, I guess these are just shiny, fancy tools that are pretty cool to own. But as I did mention, you can go ahead and make whatever you want on any tool out there. So guys, if you wanna know more about this machine, maybe you wanna pick one up, I'll leave it linked down in that description box. I'll also to leave the Western Gents video down there. And uh, I guess, thanks for watching and to my content creator friends out there, go ahead and make something.